Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, I'm Mark Wallace. Welcome to this week's episode of How'd They Do That? Well, this week we're talking to Floyd Bannister. Floyd is the owner of Loft 19 Studios. It's one of the premier studios in the West Coast. They've had high-end photographers like Mark Baptiste, Dan Winters, Martin Schuler, uh, Cliff Watts. They have all kinds of people shooting there. They've got clients like GQ Magazine, Cosmopolitan, People Magazine, clients like Nike Golf, PetSmart, Blimpy, I love their subs, all kinds of people. The list really goes on and on. They have celebrities in there all the time. They did some Beyonce shoots uh, earlier this year. Tyler Perry's been in there, Brooks and Dunn. Justin Bieber was hanging out a couple weeks ago. Danica Patrick is there as well. And again, that list just goes forever. You can look at their website, loft19.com, for a list of everybody that shoots there. It's very impressive. Well, without further ado, here is our interview with Floyd Bannister. Well, Floyd, thank you so much for joining us today. Actually, we're joining you. We're here at Loft 19, which you own, and we're actually on this gigantic site. It's 40 feet by 35 feet, I think. Is that right? Rough of those are the dimensions, sure. Huh? Um, and tell us how you built this studio. Well, first of all, it started out back in uh, 05 with my son, Brian. Uh, he was a cinema major at USC and he said uh, one day he called and said, hey dad let's help let's build a photography studio so I said oh really what kind of photography studio you're thinking about and uh, he said well I like this big open spacious area to shoot and here I'm thinking he wants like a 20 by 20 right. room that he can control light and whatnot he goes oh no no I want this huge space where I can have lots of room to move and build all my sets and things of that nature so that's how it started and uh, we started out with a 35 foot uh, psych wall behind us and it has progressed into a, a little bit larger project than I had thought, but initially it was a, a 30 foot psych wall. And so uh, just to give you an example of how large this studio is, we actually have a ceiling of about 20 feet, is that correct? That's correct, with a grid of about 18 feet. About 18 feet when the grid falls below that. And then this is Studio 1, there's Studio 2, and then there's Studio 3 under construction. And total square footage is? About 12,000 square feet. 12,000 square feet. So not something you're going to fit into your bedroom or your living room. Uh, it's gigantic. Um, and whatever happened to Brian? I mean, we don't see him around much except for on television. So uh, he's with the uh, Kansas City Royals. He's with the Kansas City Royals. Actually, when we built the studio, he was with the Mets at the time, but he's been sent straight to the uh, Kansas City Royals. He's uh, almost in uh, his fifth year now playing professionally. And uh, I miss him a lot because I always knew that this was his first love, photography. Right. And uh, so it was always a challenge for me to... Uh, try and take whatever needs he had and really trying to help him produce the product that what he wanted to do. And unfortunately he doesn't live here because the seasons are so long and the off season uh, takes him away from the, the stage. But uh, I keep him abreast of what's going on. And I've actually shot him some pictures of our uh, shoot that you're doing here. <laughs> well, and uh, awesome. he thinks it's the coolest thing going. <laughs> we need to get him out. So he gave up photography to become a starting pitcher in major league baseball. Well, I think he, <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, he felt that, well, you know, that small wind of opportunity with baseball, I figured I better take advantage of it. Right. And baseball really plays a part of Loft 19. The, even the logo, Loft 19, is a baseball diamond, which... It, it is uh, a little play. Yeah, it's in uh, 19 it's, was the number that I wore at ASU that's retired and right. in the Hall of Fame, in College Hall of Fame. And that's the number that Brian wears with the Royals now. That's awesome. And Floyd actually uh, played as a starting pitcher in the major leagues for, from 1976 to 1992. Is that right? Correct. That's a long time. And believe me, my, my body feels... <laughs> I'm a baseball nut, so I sort of know more about him than he knows. But uh, anyway, I'm not stalking you. Uh, <laughs> so we have this studio. Are there any pointers you could give to photographers that are either new to renting a studio or some things that uh, you've seen as photographers who walk through the door that they're like, oh, I didn't know that I was supposed to do that? Or I think that's the biggest thing is, especially the newer photographers that want to use a studio, they have to have an understanding of not only the cost, but uh, the different things they need to do in progression to actually run a studio. First of all, understanding what they need, if they need a small studio, a large studio, what their actual venue is for that day or that shoot. Uh, so there's a contract involved, there's insurance involved, um, there may be a power issue involved if we're using big lights like we're using here that may factor in uh, the rental cost. Uh, I think the biggest thing is to have an understanding of what they want to try and accomplish and start from there. But uh, yeah, there's a progression of things and also what kind of help they're going to have. I think, I think the biggest uh, problem that a lot of photographers don't realize is how long it takes to set things up. Right. And a lot of times, like in this stage for this shoot, for instance, we had to pre-light the day before because you don't want to take a lot of your time setting up the stage when you really want to get up and moving, especially if you have a hired hand on. Um, so those are all things that have to factor into your cost is time. And then also 
the people that work for you or work with you, they need to be knowledgeable on how to use the equipment. Right. And so uh, back in my theater days, uh, when I used to work in not movie theaters, but real theaters, a lot of times uh, production companies would roll in and they wouldn't have an electrician because they didn't realize they actually had a certified electrician to plug into power. And so we constantly had those kind of issues. Do you find things like that in this studio as well? It's something that has to be addressed. There's no question because there, you know, you bring a lot of novice people in and all of a sudden they'll have a hot light that's fired up on the wall or in a lunchbox and you'll have a gentleman over there trying to put the light or a globe or whatever in and they don't realize, oh, hey, this thing's hot. Right. Um, so those are all the issues you have to be careful. Of. of course, that's why you need insurance, but you also need to have safety as number one when you're on stage because there are a lot of people around here. When you have a lot of electricity involved, things can happen that are uh, not always for the good. When right. you have any kind of error on stage, you want to keep it to a limited time. Right, and not only is it a lot of electricity, but a lot of times in a studio like this, it's in the dark, a lot Correct. of electricity. And you have so. a lot of stands that are rolling around, it's easy to bump into things, and, and you can really cause a lot of expensive happenings that you really don't want to happen. So a lot of safety training, safety awareness, and I know that uh, we bring up all the time with our staff and volunteers closed-toed shoes and make sure you have little flashlights and make sure you know where you're going and don't, you know, those types of things to make sure that people are safe. Um, well, in addition to that, let's talk about what it costs to rent a studio. Um, what are the major costs involved? Uh, do you rent by the hour? Is there a day rate? Is there a pre-flight day? What are some of the, the things that people need to know before they rent a studio? Uh, basically, a studio like this, especially the larger studio, are usually nothing less than a half-day rental to a full day rental to, of course, overtime if that happens to be the case. Smaller studios are different. The reason the larger studio usually has a, five, a half a day minimum is because it takes so much to cool the studio down. When you've got a 6,000 square foot stage and you need to bring it down to 70, 75 degrees, that's a very large cost. Uh, and right. to be able to transfer that into the actual contract, uh, it, it's not beneficial for me to go in an hour to hour. Now, the smaller stages, I usually start out with a two to three hour minimum because I feel that most people, if they're going to try and set up and do a photo shoot, it's going to take at least an hour and it may even take longer with, uh, with the, the models, with the styling and with the makeup and things of that nature. And then for them to get their lighting set up, it's going to take at least three hours. So those are usually my minimums uh, when I do it on the, in, in the small stage. And in this studio, when you rent for a day, that includes not only the stage, the psych, includes makeup counters, includes a conference room, it's a kitchen, bathrooms, it's a lot of stuff. It's not just a place to take pictures, is that right? Correct? This studio is set up not just as a big box. Uh, I've got the nice lobby out front for clients to relax. I've got the upstairs lobby that has TV and uh, Cox Gable, and it just allows people to have a relaxing environment. Uh, it's got the kitchen, uh, it's got a couple of dressing rooms, three makeup mirrors, uh, a comfortable place in, in the staging area as well and also off stage there's plenty of room for parking extra equipment grip lighting whatever they might need right and so some of the events that I've done in the past last year I was on tour with pocket wizard we had to rent studios specifically not just for the space but for the parking the restroom facilities and you know what do you do with a group of people that's a hundred people or so because they have to have a place to park, they have to make sure they have some food and water and all that kind of stuff. So those things are very important when you're looking at a studio as well. They really are because their amenities are very important. And you have, like you say, you have to have plenty of parking and you have to have a lot of egress and ingress with a building of this size. Right. And those are important issues when you have a large number of people. Well, a lot to think about. Well, thanks for joining us today. We're gonna uh, take us out. We actually have been shooting here at Loft 19 for the last three days. We're gonna show you some scenes from some of the, uh, the stuff that we've shot here on the stage and some behind the scenes stuff. We'll set some music to this and you can sort of get a feel for this gigantic studio uh, to understand the magnitude of this place and how much I love it. Well, thanks again, Floyd, for joining us. Thank you, Mark, enjoyed yeah. it. Well, that was a lot of fun hanging out with Floyd at Loft 19. Remember, if there's somebody that you'd like to see on our show, how they do that, you can send your suggestions to me at askmark at adorama.com. Well, thanks for joining us. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.